here. You're about to experience the 412 like never before. And now, straight out of Rock One, it's me and your favorite radio talk show host. Studio number one is fired up, so pump it up loud. We're laying it out in style. style. We know how to say Monongahela and Kabasi. The main studio is on the southern border of the city, and no phone users are permitted in my lair. I cuss. We have guests, but Shell and I round out the panel because Hutch the Third is putting in work for the country. That's just what we do. Jen takes the pictures and shoots the video. I'm Hutch Jr., Pops, and I'm right about damn near every day. All right, get a beer. You're about ready to be amazed by our digital prowess. Here it comes over the powerful BEV Productions megaphone. It's Pittsburgh, and it's a bird's eye view. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Berg's Eye View. We're back again, finally. Info track or intro track provided by Bernard Purdy. The track is happening from the Lyella original motion picture soundtrack on Light in the Attic Records. It is Friday, the 21st day of September. Oh, that was horrible. In Pittsburgh, please join me in welcoming Stowe back to the show from the Pucker hey, Time Show. Hey, Stowe in the house, man. How's it going, guys? Yeah, this plant, this promises to be a good one. It's been a, a long damn time since we had a show, so I'll tell you, I, uh, I've been off the net for more than a month, and I apologize, ladies and gentlemen, especially to my BEV Gold members. Uh, there, there's just been a lot of things going on at work, and uh, it gets it gets hairy out there sometimes, but we're back, and luckily we were able to uh, book Stowe to come on the program from the Pucker Time Show. Why don't you talk to, uh, talk about Pucker Time a little bit? Hey, uh, glad to be here, man. Hey, Pucker Time, same thing, man. Just getting a co-host, getting the time together. Stowe Jr. has been kind of... Ah, fuck it, he's whipped. Uh, I got no other... Th- I got nothing else. There's man. nothing wrong with that, though. At least he's, he's whipped, at least man. going down that road. I mean, hopefully, you know, he... I don't know. I'm not, not going to go there. I just... <laughs> he's, being, every... he's, being, he's, he's playing grown up, man. He's playing yeah. house. That's shit, good. It's, it's good. Uh, my son's the same way. Hutch the third hasn't been in the show since the freaking 80s. But uh, yeah, uh, I know how it is, man. I know how it is. He's doing well though, uh, doing his military thing. So that's good. Uh, the best way to get the show is BEV Gold, ladies and gentlemen. I can't uh, tell you enough. Now tonight's BEV Gold uh, video is going to be funny because you're only going to hear me. You're not going to hear Stowe. Uh, but that's just uh, we're we're moving along in increments. We're we're bringing the show up into up into the modern age here, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. Check out the Facebook page, Berg's Eye View, find that. It's over, I've got over 50 likes, but it didn't seem to kick into the Berg's Eye View slash, I mean, Facebook.com slash Berg's Eye View, so I'm going to have to figure out what's going on there. Uh, you can go to the blog, get there from the website, just push the blog button, or it's Berg's Eye View WordPress.com, a lot going on there. Call the show, 412-567-1460, and we'll make you famous. Uh, follow me, Berg's Eye View, on Twitter. Don't get uh, too upset or frustrated because I uh, I get a lot of follow requests. And I something about Twitter, there's a lot of commercial things, and I don't like to clog myself up. So I don't, uh, about once every couple of weeks, I go in there and clear that out. So if I don't follow you back right away, don't get frustrated. Uh, what else is going on? The chat room and BEV TV on Ustream, you can catch the show, the I mean, we have faces for radio, but for some reason we decide to do video. I don't know what's up with that, but uh, it's fun. So <laughs> what are you going to do? So anyway, I I went on a vacation, so it was pretty fun. Yeah, went, you went to uh, South Carolina? No, I went down Virginia Beach. Oh, okay, Virginia Beach. Yeah, yeah. other than the, the fully uniformed Muslim women on the beach, other than that, it was pretty good. I, I don't get that, man. Uh, I just don't get that. And I'm not even going to go down that road. We can talk about yeah, that after the show. Things I don't get, man. <laughs> but, but, I mean, it was weird, though, because it was like the misogyny is a trip because the whole rest of the family looks like me and you, except for the jihad beard. But other than that, like, they had, like, swim trunks on and, and were, like, drinking pop, and the kids were playing with rubber duckies and shit, and then the old ladies there in the 7th century outfit, dude, I mean, it's like she was trying to... Like, put her feet in the water, and her fucking uniform was getting wet down the bottom. 
<laughs> it's like that it blew me away. We drove down, and it's always. I, uh, I, I still I don't even understand yarmulkes, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Where I'm at, you know. But we drove down, you know, and it was culturally shocking, especially going through West Virginia. You know, you go through there, and and you, and you there's like these towns, the way they name them. Now ours are funny too. You gotta admit. You know, because we take a, a French town like North, North Vers Versailles and call it North Versailles. Yeah. You know, that's just how we roll. But we don't have anything like Paw Paw, West Virginia. You know, that's just uh, Paw Paw, P A W P. I'm guessing that's Paw Paw's farm. <laughs> uh, I don't know. But uh, right Paw, underneath the Paw Paw. Two kids and 394 grandkids. And that's where <laughs> Paw Paw lives. <laughs> Maybe. But right underneath there was, it said shindig and it pointed to the left and there was like balloons on it <laughs> nice I, I love driving through there it's it's funny man it is i remember driving through idaho one time i was going from uh seattle to denver was there anything there yeah there was a sign that said new order order next left <laughs> I'm not yeah i believe me. that i had these little walkie talkies because jackie was my wife was driving as well from the car behind me yeah and i'm like do not stop if they get me just keep driving <laughs> <laughs> i uh you remember I used to be in the ham radio. I don't know what it is about this radio thing, but I was in the ham radio, and, and, and the way that works is is that when you talk to somebody from another state or another country, you send a QSL card. It's like a postcard. Right. Like you make up a card for you, you know, like everything that's good you about you. Be, be a snail mail? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is 10, 20 years ago. But I got a, a contact in Idaho, and they sent me – a card back and it was like of a Idaho state trooper. <laughs> it was like you will obey our laws in Idaho and I'm like, damn. You, know, I know you were you were big into the ham stuff. Yeah. And, and now back in twenty years ago, when you first heard about like chat rooms and shit, were you like, I I could do that anyway, man? Actually, yeah. It it was uh, uh the first thing was email. Because we had email way you before copy surf, dude. Yeah, you were a copy serve guy. Yeah, way before the internet we had bulletin boards. And uh, I or handle you had one three eight nine four six two four seven one five five at CompuServe dot net. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I actually comp, CompuServe. I don't want to get off the subject too much here, but it was cool because one of the coolest things I ever did in 1990 was typed a letter to our mother on CompuServe and paid them a dollar, and they typed it out on paper and put it in an envelope with a stamp and mailed it. What's well, like a Marsgram? Okay, but I mean well, this, Marsgram this, was a phone call, right? Yeah, yeah. You write, you read over the phone. I yeah. I did that too. I did it with us. Some, some idiot in my unit and sent his fucking his wife the credit card number on a Mars gram. <laughs> beautiful. His, his bill was like a phone book. Man. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> some of the shit people do. Now you were telling me that uh, you know, you live in Tacoma, Washington, right? You know, right adjacent to Seattle, and uh, Fort Lewis is there. And right. and you had a uh, a neighbor problem. You had you had some uh, problem. She, I got this batshit crazy lady who lives across the street from me. She lived there for thirty years, and she's uh, she's called the city on me uh, half a dozen times, twice for my basketball hoop. It's one of those portable hoops, you know. You fill the bottom with water. Got tires. Yeah, it's got two little plastic wheels on it, and you know it's it's a, and it's adjustable. You can adjust from ten feet down to six feet, however big the kids are. It's like four hundred bucks for this thing. And she's been bitching about it for three years. Uh, she called the city on me for that. She called the city on me because my dog got away. What'd she I, call you on the city for? For having a basketball hoop? Yeah, because it was. It, uh, she was worried that the street cleaners couldn't come around. <laughs> wouldn't clean up her shit. And then she got pissed about my attack pug. <laughs> <laughs> one of pissed those on neighbors. Fucking, yeah, pissed on her fucking daisies and shit. No, she came down banging on my door for that one, man. And she's just generally a nutso fucking lady, right? Well, I, I go outside the other day, and the goddamn basketball hoop, it was a, there's a little uh, turnaround in front of my house. It, it's like a cold as cold stack, but, the, but they extended it another half a block. So it's just a big round bulge in the street, if you will. So you come down the hill, there's a turnaround, and then you can get down another, I don't know, 500 feet. But there's a little turnaround there. And it's on her side of the turnaround because... If the kids miss when they're shooting a basket on her side, it just hits the little hillside there and rolls back down. If they do it on my side, it goes down into a big ravine. So I got the hoop on the other side. Well, the hoop is tipped over in my goddamn driveway. 
what the fuck is this, man? So that, <laughs> so that's like I get a phone call from other neighbor going, hey, that crazy-ass lady just knocked your shit over and pushed it across the street. I'm like, no way. She goes 90 pounds tops. And this thing is, it's difficult to move. I got to help Grendon, who's a pretty big dude. I have to help him when he wants to move it. Now, see, I think back, I think back. When I moved in my house here, there's a common path through my backyard to get through this hole in the fence in my yard that goes into the school. Right. And at first, I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to put barbed wire up here. I'm going to mine this. You know, I'm going to have lights come <laughs> on and the fucking dogs. And then I started remembering me and you when we were growing up. There was, we, we didn't need sidewalks. But we would have reacted to that in a detrimental way to the homeowner. Pro probably. There would have been M80s going off in the mailbox. And, you know what I mean? And, and so I like, all right, no, I'm not doing that. I'm just well, gonna. I'm just gonna tell them, hey, you come by the yard, and I'm out on the porch. Speak, motherfucker. Say hello. No, that's all you gotta do. To my son's friends all the time. And like they'll come in the room and won't say the way. You don't fucking speak, man. Right. I'm not invisible. You know. Come on. So that was the the the, the way I went with it. I, I decided. Like, so we, we didn't need sidewalks back in the day, man. No. We could get we could get from one block to the next with no. Oh, we no, knew how to get through everybody's yard. Fences. And, oh, yeah. And then when the... Uh, I mean, the cops had come, and you'd be out the window, down the stairs, out the door, over the fence, and two blocks away before it. somebody and, answered and the door. When when Jay and Charlie, I'll leave their last names out of it, when they moved in, yeah. Jay was a, was a pioneer <laughs> in getting around some fences. <laughs> yes, he was, man. We made him the lookout. He established some trade routes there. He, shit, he did. <laughs> oh, yes, he did. And we had plenty of them, too. I mean, they were everywhere. <laughs> You know, from point A to point B, any point A to any point B, there was a shortcut. Oh, absolutely. That it all somebody's yard. Yeah. And, and broken bones if you fuck up, like if you didn't quite make that jump yeah. to the other wall or whatever it was. But just a couple more things on uh, my vacation because it costs so goddamn much. Uh, I was on there. There was a plethora of, uh, there was a lot of lesbians there. I'll just say that. I mean, there was a lot of, oh, like a, uh, a uh, lot of women. What do you call it? Uh, oh shit! I'm drawing a blank here, and I'm just noticing it. I'm not saying nothing wrong with it. What's, what's the show? The big the concert? Uh, I don't know. Oh, Lilith Fair. That's the one. Yeah, I mean it was. Uh, Is there a Lilith Fair show there going on or something? No, there was like a run. Any concert or something? There was a run, show? like a run, marathon thing where run away from Dick thing, but they going. walked. <laughs> you know, it was funny, but. uh Anyway, the, the everything was so expensive there. I'll tell you, it was it was nuts. I mean, like breakfast was like thirty dollars, but uh, we're walking up to go to the car, you know, up the stairs in the garage. The stairs are kind of like half inside, half outside. There's like, yeah, yeah I got you. A, a, a parking garage. Yeah, yeah. Get up to about the third level, and, and you could tell somebody had pizza the night before because they barfed all. Oh, they're, they're nice. I was like, damn, pepperoni and mushrooms, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was something. Uh, I went on uh, vacation d two months ago to Mexico, three months ago yeah. to Mexico. And, dude, the only way to fly is friggin' all-you-can-eat, man, uh, all-inclusive. Yeah. It's the shit. Well, I went, I, I actually took it a step further, and I had, uh, I went to this thing, and, and Jen's the one who lined it up. They were giving us an $80 uh, gift card for restaurants, all the restaurants that were down there, if we came and listened to their spiel. Sit on this, this sales show, yeah. For a timeshare, yeah. And I uh, I told Jen, I said, we ain't buying shit. We're going there, and we're going to be out as quick as we can. And I started listening to this lady, and, and I realized as she's talking to me, that's the first week-long vacation. It was the first vacation, period, that I had since I got back from overseas. Mm -hmm. And she started laying all these statistics out of me from the National Institute of Health about how vacations lower your stress level. And, you know, I'm getting a little bit older. I'm still handsome as hell, but, you know, and it was just like, she talked me into the shit. And I'll talk to you about that later, but I went ahead and bought a timeshare. I bought a, I have a week, and it got even better than that. I get a week anywhere in the world. I mean, I have a week down in Virginia That's Beach. That's how I went on my vacation, man. Dude, I bought them off another guy. I yeah, bought his and I can sell them. <laughs> and I don't have, and it's, uh, you know, like I was down there for five nights, I think. Which, what's the name of the company? You, Gold you, Coast. Gold Coast? Okay. But I, I, I sent you something where I will. But anyway, because then I can get my maintenance fee cut. On. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm in. The, uh, I was down there, and I was at a Hilton hotel. You know what I mean? I was at a nice place. But after a couple of days, that shit turns into a cell, dude. 
the hotel room, you know. Yeah. You know, you're in there and don't have any kids with you. It gets even worse. So I got a big, I got the big one. I got the two bedroom. Depends if you're with your wife or not. <laughs> yeah. But I got the two bedroom, you know, big place because we could fuck up a hotel room. Me and Jen, the hotel room don't stand a chance. Yeah. You know, in the first day, there's shit on every chair. You know, there's no. Surface. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, but I'll, I'll talk to you about that later. But I, I did get a uh, a timeshare for, uh, and I got an extra week for being in in uh, my job. Oh, that's cool, man. You know, and for it, 10 years, know, for 10 uh, years. I've never heard anyone that owned a timeshare that was like, man, I really regret buying this. I've seen a lot of people selling them. Well, the only, well, number one, because it, it's, I mean, it's almost like carrying another mortgage. They sell them because it you know, is. times are tough. Man. I'm going to have it sold off. I'm going to have it paid off quick. But it even has a deed, so I can will it to somebody. Yeah, no, it's like buying a second house. It is, and they, and they treat the taxes like that, too. You know what else you can do with timeshare? We're boring our, we're boring our audience here, but good. That's still kind of cool. There's another thing you can do with timeshares is you can buy a, a, a jet airplane. Huh? I seen this on uh, Run's house, the MTV show with Run, Run DMC, Reverend Run, and he he has a timeshare and a jet. D oh yeah. And he gets like That's you know, cool. isn't he broke yet? Pretty hours of time in a jet, you know, wherever he wants to go. He paid for his time, and it's a private jet. He's not broke yet. No, I, I, he made a bunch of money on an MTV show. His kids are fucking making records, and he, he's he's the the he's a true pimp. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he's a true pimp, man. That motherfucker. Did you hear? Out. You know the story about uh, Run DMC D. Mike Daniels. His voice went. His yeah, voice his went. Voice went. And then, well, uh, Jam Master Jay's dead. Yeah, he got whacked. Yeah. You still got his autograph? Remember when I got you that? Yeah, I do somewhere. I don't know where it is, but I got it. I actually treasure that. I, man, I saw those guys in the friggin' early 90s at the NCO Club in Berlin, Germany, man. Awesome. And there were like 50 people there. Really? That's and awesome. And we went up for autographs and shit on those cards, like the one I got you. Uh -huh. The little records they had on the table. Uh -huh. And uh, Run and, and DMC were like, fuck this, we're out of here. There's 50 people, get the fuck out of here, man. And Jam Master J was like, no, fuck you guys, man. These people paid their money. Oh, it costs. Sign some shit, man. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah it, was, yeah, it was pretty cool, man. And then eventually they were like, all right, where are we going to go? And they all went somewhere partying, you know. Oh, shit. But it was cool. Yeah, that, that Jam Master J was like, no, fuck you guys, man. These <laughs> people pay. I mean, he's like pointing. There's 10 of us standing there. He's like, these people pay. Nice. They didn't pay our whole salary, but they paid to come see a show. We owe them. That's right. <laughs> Now, you know from us going to school that it is a very new phenomenon, and you're not going to know this because you're not in Pittsburgh right now, but there were never 10 million school buses within the city limits when we were going to school. Motherfucker walked to school. Well, now, if you're more than a mile away from your school, I don't know what the exact digits are, but... There are school buses everywhere. I fucking hate school buses. School buses piss me off so bad. They're the, they're, first of all, these are the people that can't get regular jobs because a school bus driver is a part-time job. And I don't really have anything against school bus drivers, but a city and school buses do not, can't coexist. I mean, when you're trying to get to work and these school buses are stopping every two blocks and the kids get out and they're on fucking Ritalin, I mean, they, they walk like, I mean, you know, when, when you got in the street, you know that car can kill me. I am going to yield to that car. These kids just walk yeah, Because like, they got the stop sign on the side of the bus. That's horrible, man. I mean, it is, we have to rethink that. that. I mean, isn't Pat fucking going broke? Yeah, everybody's going broke. But, but I, was, I mean, that, that the school is, too. I mean, the school board, that we can't afford these schools. 
I mean, guaranteed. I paid a. I paid ten cents to get on the public bus when I was a kid. I paid. I mean, yeah, but Bob but, had to pay for the pass that would get you on for a dime. And if I didn't have a pass, I did the fucking fantastic, amazing penny drop. Well, they, but what they <laughs> what they do here? I mean, instead of they keep all these people employed, and they close another building down. I mean, we're down to like there's about three schools and all. <laughs> didn't aren't they closing Peabody? They're didn't closing they? all the fucking schools, all of them, man. I mean, it's oh, what's up, with, oh man? You know what? I just read today though. What's up with your boys at Central, man? What happened? And I'm fucked up. Went painted the Fox Chapel Fox blue and gold, man. Did they? <laughs> yeah, they did. And put some profanity and shit on there, man. No, that's the boys. They, they got to get. Well, Mr. Wheeler wouldn't tolerate that shit. No, no. Wheels would have. Wheels would have put somebody on their head. I'm sorry. I, I read Fuzz Gazette every day. Yeah, no. Because <laughs> uh, I heard you, you know, I've seen you post stuff. But uh, that and the other thing that pisses me off is this story came out. And I was talking to Funky Dung about this. Uh, this lady, you probably saw the story. This lady took her kids, her little infants, a little bit bigger than infants, to the restaurant and had the combination booster seat shit house. Oh, nice. The potty thing. And in the restaurant at the table. Kids taking a shit. With the pants all the way off. Oh, fucking wrong. And I'm like, people have some kind of give a shit about the people that are around you. They don't. No, no, no. People do not. But people they used to. Give, and give I do. I did well, not take. Like, I, I did not I, take I, my kids out I, when they were that young. Oh God, we're killing each other. I didn't take I, my but, kids out when they were that young. I mean, if if there was, like our parents, I don't think our parents ever took us out to dinner ever in their life. <laughs> you know, but my, my kids. Or, or if the offer came, it was like holy shit. Yeah. This special shit right here. Yeah, but these people now they do not care, man. They, that kid will be screaming. They'll be in the middle of a restaurant, and they won't do anything about it. They'll just sit there. And it's like, don't you realize that you were fucking up 80 people's dinner? I did read an article, though, just to, to restore some, some modicum of faith in mankind. I did read an article the other day about a, a woman who got, or a couple who got on a plane with a baby. Yeah. And had prepared, like, 50 little gift baskets. For all the rest of the passengers. Yeah, with some gum and some candy That's and a cool. note that said, look, this is my kid's first time flying. We're sorry if we're fucking you up. We hope he's good. This is just letting you know that we I mean, we have to go there. We're just acknowledging that we're sorry if he fucks your time up. Yeah. And, I mean, and it turned out the kid acted right, but I thought that was pretty, you know, and that's how I feel. That's my first instinct is... You know, if my kids are getting louder, say, hey, come on, you're, we're disturbing other people. That's right. Oh, I'm the same way. I, I'll take the kid. We're going out in the parking lot, boy. If you don't ease up, it's going to be me and you outside. And that straightens them right out, you know. But uh, a lot of it, too, is, uh, you know, that everything's for the kids. These fucking kids these days, they get so much. I mean, yeah, I, w I went up to my own stepson's room the other day, and I was like, dude, you have a lot of stuff. You got more stuff than... Anybody I ever saw, you got more I, shit than I Taylor Rabbit. <laughs> I had a fish tank when I was a kid. Yeah, paid I had, for that motherfucker myself with my paperboy money. I had a book. I mean, it was pretty good. <laughs> it was a good book. You know, dude, you did. You had books. Yeah, I had a lot of books. I did. Not only did you have all them brown bound printed nineteen thirty one Hardy Boys mysteries, they're probably worth a fucking fortune right now. Yeah, they burned up though. No, that's what I mean, but I'm saying those things were old. Dude. They were. The 20s, 30s, man. Oh, man, when I got them, my grandmother gave them to me. And, and we, we had the encyclopedia from 1951. And it was highly entertaining, especially the World War II pages. Uh, see, I, always, I dug the flag page. Cool. Yeah, yeah I, I did, too. That was color, wasn't it? I was about some half. Yeah, it was color. That was the only thing that was color. <laughs> One time, I'm, I'm like griping to Dad. I was probably 12. And I'm like, Dad, we need a new encyclopedia, man. This thing is like... Ancient man, I mean, this is some. This is from before I was born. This doesn't even have fucking Jimmy Carter in it. Man. <laughs> and that was like the yeah, fucking newest. The, the newest entry was like Dwight Eisenhower. I'm serious. He's like, yeah, tell me about how Lincoln changed there, son. Oh yeah, that's the old man. The old man wasn't spending no money unless it was on my mom. He was like, fuck that. No, that or if he got a catalog. He used to dig some catalogs, man. Yeah, I do too. I still like them. Our mother, our mother took a 1909. Sears catalog reproduction and wallpapered the stairway going to the kitchen. That was cool. And you'd sit, to, we'd be sitting there on the stairs. Shit. Yeah, we'd sit on the stairs and just be reading about reading the... the like, damn, you could get a fucking prosthetic leg for nine cents. <laughs> Look at this freaking 38 
38 pistol for $19. And there was all kinds of shit on it. Oh, yeah, it was outstanding. I remember tumbling down them stairs and whacking my head on that fridge <laughs> at the bottom, man. That fridge at the bottom of the stairs one time, man. Oh, black and white and linoleum. Hell, yeah. No, it was. that's classic kitchen, man. If I yeah. ever am in a position to, like, design my own kitchen... 12 by 12, black and white, fucking checkerboard. Man. Yeah, that, and that old, uh, that old, I don't know what you call it, that table with the big ass drawers. Yeah, the bread thing. And it, yeah, it's like they put flour in one drawer. And you and just take the meat grinder and di- take the meat grinder and just close the vice right on it. Nobody cared oh, about yeah. the surface or nothing. Yep. Yeah, that was that was pretty nice. Now, did you know that I am a podcasting luminary? That's pretty cool, man. I mean, that was cool. I got an email from Libson asking me if I would like to participate in a thing for podcasters. You could probably do it, too. You're with Libsyn, aren't you? Yeah, but I think I've been off the air for too long. Well, maybe. I've been off the air almost uh, since, uh, oh, Jesus, almost a year, I think. You're going to have to start co-hosting here. But uh, anyway, so they sent me an email, and they asked if I wanted to. I had been a podcaster. You had to be a podcaster longer than six years, I think. After six years or something, yeah. Yeah, and I was. That fit the bill, so... uh, I went ahead and they said, pick five of these questions and answer them. So I did, and I gave them a little extra content. And they published it, man. It was pretty cool. Called me a, a Pittsburgh podcasting luminary. I was like, I don't know how many people I saw that. that. I uh, sent you an email after that. I read that, man. That was pretty cool. I was. I was impressed myself. Man. That made my day. That, that actually gave me a little bit of fire to get back on the show. Because, I, I've, like I said, I've been the last broadcast it was August 18th. And that's, that's people the, don't understand, I think, how hard it is. Well, I guess, I mean, people do. I mean, they do their thing. But the, how hard it is to do something, to commit, to, we're going to do this at yeah. this time, every week, no matter what. Now, you can do it by yourself, but with two of you. Oh, yeah. It's so difficult, especially if, like, you and I are kind of old. You know what I mean? Like, you're, like, <laughs> all in your 50s. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it's Younger folks, you know, that are, they're, whether they're changing colleges or whatever they're doing, you know what I mean? It's hard oh, yeah. for them to, to commit to something to do it once a week. Right. We both, we both have shows. The fucking ass. We both have shows that our sons are on, and them suckers just bailed on our ass. They're like, yeah, well, you know, I'm going to go ahead and I'll be back in four years. I'm going to college. You know, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you set the show up. But I mean, it's, it, you can come on here or whatever. I'll come on your show however you want to do it. But, uh, the scheduling was out like that for me, and I do have a weekly show. I mean, Steel City Resistance. Luckily, yeah, Warden, you have another show to do altogether. That has to remain relevant, and has to. And be that's what kind of was hurting this show. That was hurting this because I mean, it's a, anyway. But but we got our our uh, what do you call it when you're you, you know you, you're good with the other guy. We got a rhythm together, and yeah. but I mean now now they give us a screwed up Steeler schedule. You know, our show runs at Sunday at 7 o'clock. Well, if there's a 4 o'clock game on Sunday, i got to do this show tomorrow. You know, but we figure it out. It works out pretty good. It, it, it's, uh, uh, it's pretty easy to do. And when you're passionate about something, it makes it even a little easier. Hey, did you check out uh, Pittsburgh Dad's latest video about the Pirates? Uh, I didn't, but I... Uh, it's, it's a fucking good one, man. We're going to try to... Pittsburgh Dad on the show. I'm, I'm going to try and get it for next week. Well, that'd be great. This dude is fucking hilarious. The only thing is, is I got to figure out how to get, and we'll have to do some experimenting, because uh, I got to make sure that we can do this video. Anyway, we'll talk about that after the program. Or even if we could just put an audio interview on with him. You know yeah, I mean? that that might be good too. Because uh, he did, <laughs> he said uh, the, the he's hilarious. He's got a lot of followers too. Hey, he's got the uh, Mr. Rogers kind of tribute yeah. piano music in the beginning, and the video kind of looks like Mr. Rogers. Uh, and he comes on, and it says, June. And it, the title of the episode is Watching the Pirates. And it's like, we're going to the damn World Series this year, man. July. Yeah. Well, he's probably make the playoffs, man. <laughs> August. <laughs> well, there's still wild cards, uh, wild, or, uh, wild card spot open. Oh, man, they're, they're horrible. Yeah, sitting there with his mouth hanging open. It was it was an unbelievable descent. I mean, for them to make it so uh, up until the All Star break, when they came out of the All Star break, they made a bunch of trades that I can't imagine why they did it, and they they just uh, were not the same since then, man. And it was uh, it was sad. And now they're That's under five hundred. One and one. <laughs> now they're under five hundred. The Steelers are are one and one. So and I think the first loss was a fluke. Yeah. Well. Yeah, that's possible. My man was playing. Brian Clark in the second. I mean, in our win against the uh, Jets, 
Clark and uh, Homeboy are looking pretty good. Clark yeah. And, uh, Harrison's out this week. Paul Mall is out this week. Yeah, they'll be back after the uh, after the bye week. Yeah, we'll see what happens. As long as they're around for Baltimore, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, Oakland's a pretty big rival, but I haven't been uh, following how good they are. Uh, and it's going to be challenging. I, I, I was trying to explain this to uh, Brendan, my 14-year-old, man. He's like, oh, the team sucks. I'm like, no, the teams. <laughs> no team sucks. Bad record. No team sucks in the right. NFL. They're all highly paid, highly tuned athletic machines. And they all have the drive. They all want to win. They've all done, put in the work. Well, there's monetary incentive there. I mean, not just monetary, but fame. And, well, and they want to win. I mean, I, yeah. I think that drives these guys. If you took the contracts out of it, took everything, each of them is a, a total type A, type 1 competitor. Oh, absolutely. And they want to win. That's nope. what they want to do. That's what they. That's what drives them, man. Now, BEV Gold, we're going to have some, uh, you're going to get an interesting uh, video this week. Uh, Jen has been, like, taking screenshots off the, off the uh, broadcast. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to hear Stowe, you're only going to be able to hear me, but Stowe's on the other end, and we're going to we're going to get over that technology problem too at some point in the future. We're getting better, I got to say, looking because I always look at the end product when it's done, when it's out there for for consumption. I always look at that product after everything's edited, and we're getting better, ladies and gentlemen. So, and plus it's only a dollar ninety nine anyway. So what do you want? I'm serious, man. What's that? What's you know, that? Uh, uh, that's not even half of a five dollar foot sandwich, man. I gotta tell you this story and we're getting ready to get into the to the old time old school back in the day stuff, but Well, I, I gotta finish my crazy old lady story. Oh yeah, I thought you were done. Go ahead. It's all oh, you, no, no. man. She the, the she tipped my shit over into the into my driveway, right? Now I'm thinking about Mrs. Spore. You remember her? I do. She used to live uh, two doors up from us. Yeah. It was had uh, to, had the had the uh Solomon's Christmas the tree spores. had yeah, the Christmas, Christmas tree man. with the oil, the oil lights. No, they were they were fucking candles. No, that was the candle one. Yeah, the guyers had the oil and lights. Not only did they put and it on spin. the Christmas tree candles. Yeah, it had a music box at the base that would play O Tannenbaum. <laughs> yeah, they were they were eccentric. And they would, when you came over to see it, he did something in the Philippines, man. I mean, they were big on Filipino stuff. It was all over her house, and he would go down there all the time. I don't know what the fuck he did, man. CIA agent, probably. <laughs> I'm th I think our whole street was CIA agents, man. And I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm going to stop laying out last names because I think that half our fucking street. Well, down and, on down on uh, Pembroke, they were our babysitter. Yeah, if you uh, remember Holly? her. Yeah, don't go no further she's than that because that's a real deal. I, 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 well, she's my Facebook bud, man. She's still around. She she's, on my, she's my Facebook. She bud. never got married. I, I found her on her. How else would you find her? Yeah. Anyway, I good. Got her first bike, man. But we'll we'll get to that. Me so too. Anyways, this crazy ass old lady tips this shit over. And now my first thought is, <laughs> I'm gonna burn your fucking house down. <laughs> <laughs> but then I thought about it. I go, hey, that happened to me. That kind of sucks, man. So I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna go up there. And I'm I'm gonna kill her with kindness. So I go up and I knock on her door and I go, hey, look, I see what you did here. It's, it's, it's kind of a little extreme there. Like, did you do that by yourself, really? Because you weigh like 90 pounds, man. She's like, yeah, I did. It was hard, but I did it. Okay, cool. That's fine. <laughs> I, I, I took a deck of cards with me. Now, I used to go to Mrs. Spore's house every Sunday and play cards with her. Really? Oh, for like years, man. For like I didn't four know that. years. We played this game called Russian Bank. I do and remember it's that. It's a dual solitaire game, and it involves like slapping the table when the other guy fucks up, when they miss a move, right? Yeah. And we played for a couple of years, and then she, but she fell out front and broke the orbital and lost her sight in one eye. I remember that. And I went, went when she was healthy again. I went back on a Sunday afternoon. I went to go play fucking cards at her house, and I let her slide on it. She missed a move, and I let her slide. She caught it though. She knew. No, she was like, dude, I was testing you. Do not let me know. I nice. don't come over here for you to let me win shit. That's cool. I was like, yeah, all right, cool. Yeah, she's rocking. So I, I brought a deck of cards over to. The Crazy old batch of ladies. You're going to go play cards with the bitch. I'm like, do you want to play some cards? Said, I don't play cards. All right, cool. I said, you know what? How about pie? Do you like pie? Let's go out and get a piece of fucking pie. Let's go to Denny's. We'll get a piece of pie and a cup of tea or a soda, whatever you want. And, and you can tell me what it was like around here 30 years ago. I don't like pie. Want some whiskey? All right. No, no. She made it very clear. She doesn't drink. She doesn't swear. She doesn't drink. Caffeine. She just knocks neighbors' basketball hoops over. Yeah, she just fucking vandalizes second-degree felony. Yeah, <laughs> right. 
So then I'm like, uh, well, what's, what's the big beach? He goes, well, when the ball bounces off the hill, it's killing the plants. There aren't any plants there. <laughs> I, I go, lady, look, I'll tell you what. I'll plant some ivy there, and I'll maintain it. It'll keep the erosion. So plant myrtle. Fuck that. No, I don't know. I'm, I got enough plants to take care of. Right? Uh, <laughs> I said, what's the big beach? Well, my, my friends can't park when they come and visit me. You don't have said, any friends. I said, lady, I've been living here three years. You've never had a visitor ever. <laughs> And I happen to know that your husband left you like four years ago because you're me. Fuck you. I'm leaving. So then I find out she broke the goddamn thing. I can't raise it up and down. And she lost the goddamn lid for it. Uh -oh. So I'm like, fuck you. I'm calling the goddamn cops, man. The cops did in, in 21st century style referred me to a website <laughs> to submit my complaint. Okay, that's what I'll do. So I said, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a restraining order against her when the detective calls me in five to seven business days. <laughs> and I'm going to get a restraining order against her, and then I'm going to do something to piss her off so she comes and fucks with me so that at least, and I'm not just being a dick here. Let me, let me finish this part of the story. So I'm not, I'm not just trying to make her life miserable so that someone that's in her life that gives a shit about her, whether it's her kids or her ex-husband or somebody, has to step up and realize how crazy she fucking is, man. Because the the hoop is so big and she's so small that I don't think we were very far at all from having a hoop and a dead lady in my driveway. Yeah, and then she would have said you killed her with the the yeah, no shit <laughs> with aggravated. I got this. I'm, I'm listening to this thing from a from an airport, right? These TSA guys. Somebody has this, and, and you got to put yourself. In the, in the position, right? One of these TSA agents went through the luggage and thought they'd be a smart ass, right? So there's a right. big... Now, they say sex toy. I'm going to change it. There, there's a big-ass dildo in this fucking <laughs> luggage, right? <laughs> they taped this bitch to the outside of the, of the luggage before, oh, they, I read it, and before they, they sent it on a carousel. Now, could you imagine being on a... If I was on the carousel, I'd be laughing my ass off, and I'd be looking around. All right, who's going to get it? Who's this? Who's going to... <laughs> is that classic or what? You see, I'm serious, man. It's like, go ahead, grab it. No, I, I hold up it. a sign with all the rest of the limo drivers, lady with the dildo. Yeah, you have to hear it. You have to get your <laughs> luggage. You know, you can't leave it there. <laughs> well, I actually met some guy. They they opened a new joint around here called Pint Defiance, and very a beer to, store. Yeah, it's it's called Point Defiance. is is a is a landmark near here, and they named it Pint Defiance. And what they want you to do is go in, taste a beer, and most of their business is retail. You know, buy a couple of six packs of this crazy money, and they're going to get me some Yingling. They promised me. There you it's go, my city. Well, we, they have them all over Pittsburgh. I mean, you go in there, and they're they're actually, uh, they're not like a bar, but you can drink a beer in there. So they have. Yeah, it's, six, it's not like a bar, but well, they had this tasting thing with all these like they had. The company stuff. comes in, yeah. The rep from the oh, from oh, the shit. yeah right. Yeah, we so have we the, went for the little taster, and it starts at eleven on Sunday. This past Sunday. So we're like, hey, we'll go have a couple of tasters and then go watch the Steelers. So we're in there, and there's, like, these two fat dudes, man. And I'm talking about work, and I go, yeah, work sucks. And he goes, oh, I can't talk about work too much. Yeah, fucking CIA. Department of Homeland Security. Yeah. Like, shut the fuck up. TSA, motherfucker, right? I, I'll tell you what. Yeah, right. Exactly. They got, they need to <laughs> shut that whole thing down, man. Like, I'm, I'm Homeland Security. I'm like, yeah, yeah you're fucking TSA. You're a fucking ball checker, motherfucker. No, I'm like, dude, you work for Christian Elmer, or uh, you can believe his last name. We had, we had a dude. You work for my buddy, right? Don't you? He's like, yeah, he's a supervisor. Yeah, we had like, a guy that came in here. He he was working on our uh, where I work. He was like the handyman, you know, like he had to mop shit up and you know change the light bulb or whatever stuff like that. And that dude was half a drunk, and he came in there and here in, in Pittsburgh, you know, we used to have a real big airline industry. I mean, it wasn't real big, but for Pittsburgh, it was real like big. U.S. Air was a hub. U.S. Yeah. Air, yeah, and we had a little hub. The main hub was in D.C., but we had a little secondary hub here. And so they built double what U.S. Air could handle, and then U.S. Air left. So now they have they had to drywall like a third of the a third of the way down the terminal. They just put plywood up and freaking sealed it off. So there's like two okay. thirds <laughs> two thirds of the fucking airport you don't get to see if you go inside because they don't want to heat it, you know. But that's just the way we roll here. But anyway, so they had closed down, and uh, this guy's working for us now, and he tells everybody that he was a maintenance supervisor at, at U.S. Airways. And we're all thinking, damn, man, how'd you get so fucked up drinking 
<laughs> you used to work on planes and you were in charge of it. Then I met this other guy that knew him and said, no, he maintenance. He, he was a dude that went in there and like cleaned the plane up. When it came in, <laughs> he was picking gum off. Yeah. <laughs> that freaking cracked me the fuck up. <laughs> it's one thing I love about Greater Pittsburgh International Airport, man. There ain't nothing greater or international about the son of a bitch. No, it's that they have a statue of Franco Harris next to a statue of fucking George Washington. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. And it's <laughs> in character. Uh, I, when I went for the game last year, man, that was friggin'. That's the first so time you saw that? Um, I'd seen pictures of it, but it's the first time I'd seen it live. And I got a picture of Grandin next to the... Oh, no, that's cool. Yeah, that probably made him... Happy. Oh, he's stoked about it, man. Uh, <laughs> hey, who's the guy with the ponytail? Fuck yeah, that's Franco Harris. Man. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Now, we that's were talking good. before, you know, we were we were kind of feeling a little old and shit. And uh, it's like, I know kids now, and they're not kids, they're men, that, like, were around, that were never, never experienced no computer age. You know, and, and I, we were talking, and it's like, oh, there was a whole lot more before computers. I mean, I'm wrapped up in computers, so are you, but, man, we used to, back in the day, first of all, <laughs> what we did, and, and this is no shit, this is for my younger listeners, uh, there was no such thing as being inside in the sun, even in the winter. I'd say it was outside, You man. weren't allowed in the house. I mean, I your like mother would chase house. you out. of. There was no shit like goes on today. Sitting, we weren't even allowed in our living room. I mean, it was like. Well, nobody's no nobody was ever allowed in the good living room. Right, and, and God it, forbid, there was never ever a television in the living room. Oh no, no, no. There was there was books. Maybe there the was books, but you, the there was books, but you weren't allowed to read them. You know what I mean? They were just there. They were they were part of the decor. You know. They uh, weren't much for reading anyway, man. <laughs> some of those books, man. <laughs> see, I liked some of them, but. Oh, there's yeah, there's a couple I wish I had, man. There, but. This this whole thing of, of the way kids are now, there was a couple different things. First of all, you were outside all your free time. If you weren't in school or sleeping or in church, your ass was outside. And, and we didn't. Yeah. And, and I'm saying that that like uh, we played with no toys. You know, there wasn't toys. No toys were like dirt or guns. Sticks. We had guns. We had toy guns. Toy guns. That no, looked, no. Actually, I remember one time. We sat and big wheels in front of Charlie's house, man. We took a fucking burning shit up with model glue was kind of fun. Yeah, we used to burn some glue. <laughs> Never sniffed it, but we burned it. Never sniffed it. Yeah, no, I remember we took a fucking uh, F rocket engine. Yeah, like one of the largest sizes there is. The D. We D. It in, is that the big? Yeah. Is it the smaller letter? Is the bigger one? It was a big motherfucking engine. Yeah, and we. Did the, the okay? The rocket goes up and the parachute comes out, but it, our street was like ten feet wide. So, okay. <laughs> it's a wonder we didn't burn more shit down. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> but we, we took one and covered it in glue and lit it on fire. Now these en these rocket engines are coated in like I don't know a quarter inch cardboard, yeah, very tightly wrapped paper. We used to shoot them at each other. We sat around that motherfucker for about forty five minutes waiting for that shit to finally go off. Man, I remember we used to take model airplanes. And and put them like you you put them on the street, but you'd lean them up against the curb like they had crashed, and then you would and put set it on fire. you'd put glue on the wings and glue around the cockpit where the pilot was, and then light it, and then we'd do shit like throw twenty two rounds in there, <laughs> you know what I mean? Wait for the twenty two <laughs> rounds to kick to cook off, and we're on a, a crowded residential street, and and it was interesting because when we played sports. We learned how to play baseball on a hill. You know, when we played baseball, uh, you missed the ball. You're fucking. You're running. You got to run because there's sewers on all four corners at, at the bottom. At the and you only had one. We were poor. You, there was only one baseball. You know, if we were playing baseball, that was because somebody got a baseball, and you'd have to fly down there and dive in front of the sewer to make sure it didn't go. Remember. Sacrifice the body. Sacrifice I mean, the, body, man. the catcher was the most important position. We almost had a backup guy behind the catcher so we could keep playing. You know, and you'd be playing, and, and like, the Chevy would be first base. <laughs> and but there was an athlete guy in the neighborhood that used to he, 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 the St. James 500. Oh, yeah, we did have a guy that was an alcoholic. <laughs> he was an alcoholic, and the way that he used to hide his alcoholism was he used to be like our mentor. And it wasn't anything goofy. I mean, he was a good guy. 
He was a good guy. He no was. Shit. He did stuff. I mean, he did. Uh, I don't know if anybody remembers the slot car races. Oh yeah, he had all that. And he, we do. He built this build this track with the slot cars. Just an amazing track. I mean, it, it was something like he would find because he was worldly. This guy was, and he would like yeah, get the was. exact layout of some track in in fucking Europe somewhere. And I mean, there'd be ice skaters, and I mean, he built all this stuff. No, no, he would do it right, man. And, and he would even do—he was a worldly guy. And I would love to friggin' meet this guy today. Man. You know what he's I'm doing now? Kid. He's like the commander in chief of AA. Of what? He, of AA. AA. Yeah, he he made he made AA his life. He's like the fucking grand that's poobah. Cool. That, it is that, cool. Because he used to go. He had like a third floor. This guy had a lot of money, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know how they got it, but he had it because his dad was he's a colonel. Stuck. Is what I was told. Yeah, because I remember when his, when the colonel fucking uh, he inspected the troops. Yeah, he reviewed the troops because I had an army. <laughs> Do you remember what he said after he inspected the troops? No. He told fucking Wolfen like, dude, you need to put these kids in check because that shit was nice. <laughs> <laughs> we were like ten in World War Two yeah, shit, wearing uniforms and had like positions. Yeah, we were all fucking group pants. Huh? Yeah. Us. Yeah. Us. It was crazy, man. Knocking but, down some drilling ceremony, man. And the colonel was like, uh, kind of scary, Mr. Wolfen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this guy had a up on the third floor. On the third, yeah, it's a good thing we didn't have any real guns. <laughs> no shit, man. But they used to write about us. They they write like the, the Shady Side Action Coalition or whatever it was. They'd be like, yeah, the Army was down uh, in Mr. Marshall's yard. <laughs> But because uh, we'd sleep out and shit, it was nuts. But anyway, I, and the cops called on me for prowling through. Uh, I'll give his first name Reed. Remember him, Reed F. Yeah, 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 yeah. Down on Amberson. His, his old lady called the cops on us. Oh, no doubt, she was uh, off the wall. Prowling through his yard, man. But we. Uh, <laughs> well, I was going to say I can't remember. But anyway, it, that was uh, that was fun. It was. That was. Uh, but we always played outside, and we always walked everywhere. And it was clean fun. No, no, don't, no, don't forget. We had a test before you could get in the army. Oh, I don't you remember. Get the neighborhood. Somebody coming over to visit you from school. The, uh, there was about a ten foot wall behind uh, the Lars, old drunk retired cop. The Lars. His. It was the Lars first before it was his. Yeah. But you had to jump off that wall yeah. and do a freaking tuck and roll. Yeah. At like seven years old. Yeah, we didn't play, man. It was it was for Couldn't real. Be in the in the, in the joint. And this is during the Vietnam War era, so all these older kids that are like like five six years older than us are protesting, smoking dope, growing their hair long, and we we're out there with braids and shit, with like freaking weapons, <laughs> fake you know toy no, no, guns. No, our parents would talk to each other like, "Hey, uh, have you seen uh, Hutch and Stowe? Oh, they're over in Vietnam." <laughs> yeah, Vietnam was our area. Vietnam was an area behind some apartment buildings, man. And Laos was right next to it. Yeah, well, I was in the parade grounds. Yeah, yeah, we had a good time, man. And no, the, the whole idea of this, ladies and gentlemen, is no toys, no computers, no just your imagination. Your gun was a stick. We man. had in our basement that me and Stowe did a lot. Sub. We had a submarine. We had a submarine. We man. took night the, adaptation, night adaptation. We both read a couple of these books about the USS Shark and this what other stuff. Books? Silent Service. The USS. Run silent, run deep. Run silent, run deep. Yeah. I mean, we read these books, and then we go down and put blankets over so it was dark. And I remember the periscope because the periscope, because I'd be like, oh, periscope. The periscope was uh, one yeah, of the juice crusher. machines. <laughs> and it was he, ice crusher, man. You, the, 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 yeah, that's you, what you turn, but the sound, of it go, the sound of it going up was the... The orange juice thing. You turn it on, yeah, it's like. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then we had the, uh, the, the, <laughs> the football the radar thing. was one of those fucking triangular. It wasn't a light bright, but it was one of those. It had like a chalkboard on one side yeah. and a board on one side. It was fun as hell. So you put shit in. Hours. Radar thing drawn there. We'd be all weekend on that. I mean, we'd be down there eating in the submarine, you know. But, uh, and, and uh, the engines. Back in the day, they had these things that they were football fields. It was like an advanced game of the time where you put all these little plastic. Yeah, you put these plastic football players and it start vibrating the field, and they, it was dumb as hell. A little felt football. But it worked good for a, for a submarine engine because you turn it up and be like. <laughs> oh, man. And, and, and this, is, this is honestly my mom's end of a legitimate phone conversation. 
Oh, no, they're downstairs in the sub. Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. I'll have them meet you at Vietnam after lunch. <laughs> no that, shit. That, like my mom, would, they all knew. Yeah, and I mean, that's, it was, our parents right. didn't take us out to eat, but it was a phenomenon back in the day because we were basically, uh, I don't want to say upper middle class because we damn sure weren't even, I guess that's what here, you would call here, us. Here, here's how it worked. Here's how it worked. We moved into a good place. With, everything was peachy hunky-dory. Bottom fell out for a little bit, and uh, through hard work, persistence, we managed to stay in this nice place. And temporary food stamps. There wasn't a whole lot of friggin' excess cash rolling around. Right. So, but but all of our neighbors, we lived in a neighborhood that was like half blue collar and half rich. It hadn't been completely gentrified like it is today. So there was people. There, there were still rentals. <laughs> there were still an rentals and everything. But these rich people lived there. So we went to all the best restaurants in the city. We'd go with our neighbors. Our neighbors' would, parents would take us on along. Dates. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome, though. I mean, I, I went to... Take us on dates, man. And we wake up in the morning getting some pancakes. We, like, we were cock blocks like a mother. Here. <laughs> but we went to Sedini's, the top of the triangle. We went all over the place. That was awesome, man. I Dude, mean, I woke up in, in a house one time. And shared a breakfast table with, uh, who's the dude to play Billie Jean King? Bobby Riggs. Yeah. The, the tennis professional. Got his ass. He's well, at the breakfast table. Didn't do very well for men that year. Uh, yeah, yeah, he did. It was the battle of the sexes. He got beat by Billie Jean King, who, I guess she... she I saw her down Virginia Beach. Anyway, go ahead. And then uh, <laughs> Fritz Schunk, another professional tennis player. Woke up with him at the table one morning. Yeah, that's amazing. Fine. Man. Out of my house. Or uh, one of the friends that... Another morning was the son of the founder of Alcoa was at the table. Yeah, uh, I've been to his house plenty times. I mean, I used to play on the elevator in his house. <laughs> no shit. You know, yeah, he had an elevator in the crib. In the house. In the, the crib. story house had an elevator in Yeah. There. And, uh, I mean, some of those places, even delivering papers, there's like exotic pawns out back. It was a trip. I mean, it was... Yeah. When you're cutting through the back. The, the other thing that was fun back in those days was eating up on Walnut Street, uh, eating at that Isley's. Did you ever eat there? Yes, I did. Not only did I eat there, the favorite thing was the the, the pickle the size of my head. I liked the hot dog because they had that bun that, like, had the crust tore off. Well, see, I can't get a hot dog out here on the West Coast. I can't get a freaking natural skin hot dog that tastes worth the fuck. And they tell me. In restaurants, this is a Nathan's hot dog. No, it's not. And I take bite it. I go, give me my fucking three dollars back. That is not a Nathan's hot dog. That's a fucking Costco Hebrew National. Damn. Don't tell me that that's not a natural. I want that pop when I bite yeah, the hot dog. Like original Dirty O's. I, I, I can't get it here. I used to work at Dirty O's, man. I know. I know. That I'm was like. Hired me now. I remember when I, I got hired, man. I even I named a show after you when that story was on the show. You got any warrants? Yeah. Not anymore. That man. was the name of the show. That's the job interview, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, I ain't been there in a while, man. I, I need to go back there. It's way different because they got the big bar in there, man, and everything. No, nah, it ain't no different. It's the exact same. Down, yeah. uh, down in Oakland, I mean. Well, we went down. when Last time I visited, we went to, uh, where did we go? Aiella's. We had yeah, some pizza. that ain't bad. I went there. I took. Uh, it's not Renan, as good as Minio's. Yeah. yeah, I took right into Minio's. We did that. Oh, you did I two had, pizza shops. I had a little breakfast at uh, Ritter's. Hamlet's. Ritter's? No, no, I had Pamela's. Uh, see, I, I think Pamela's way overrated. Well, it, it's way overrated, and I liked it better when it was, uh, wasn't, was it Papa Joe's? Yeah, Papa Joe's. Or, yeah, when it was Papa Joe's. But now it's like a yuppie type. I don't know what you call these people. Yeah. It, it's well, Back when we used to go there, it was a greasy spoon when we went there. Yeah, the right Age still rocking. Yeah, but it was Red Shield, and, and, and you had yeah. to get your colors. That's... You had to get your colors at the variety store at Joe Gips, and you had to get your colors at Rite Aid. Which now, did you a, ever get busted by Jip Joe? I did. And, and, and incidentally, with a kid named Aiello. I, oh, fucking Chris. Uh, Chris, uh, I hate yeah. that fucking. He stole my bike one time. Did he? My puffy that Mark Geyer gave me. Man. Well, yeah. me and him were down there, and, and we got busted. We got we got taken down in the basement. We got our parents called. Did you get called. the article about the 50-cent piece of cheese? Huh? The 50-cent piece of cheese? Did he read you that article? No, I, I, I can't remember very much of it. I was kind of scared. Uh, when he busted me, man, he he made me read this article about a dude that stole a fifty cent piece of cheese. Oh yeah. But this was, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this was the variety store. It was a real Jip joint. It's still there too. His wife, that ugly ass girl. He's got Jippy Joe's, man. That's his daughter. His daughter. That's what I meant. 
Yeah. His daughter still runs a joint, and it still has the exact same shit that it had when we were there. It uh, it's got the uh, novelties and little smoke. Yeah, like the, you, the little pretend cigarette. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, matter of fact, you nickel into a dime trick. Matter of fact, for those rockets you were talking about, because we didn't have the whole outfit. You could buy the engines there, but we didn't have the electronic igniters. So you bought the fake firecracker that had the four fuses in it. In the, yeah. And that's what we used to ignite them goddamn rocket well, engines. We had to go up to, what was it joint in Squirrel Hill you had to go to? Uh, it was like a legit toy store. They had model trains. Oh, and, I'm you know. trying to remember. There's one in Shadyside now, too. It's initial, initial name. I yeah, think name. I can't remember, but it's in Shadyside. It's right, right next to the Village Pizza where that was, Uncle Charlie's. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Uncle Charlie's. Well, it, it, was, it was something before Uncle Charlie's, too, man. Yeah, the Village Pizza. It was Village Pizza yeah. and Uncle Charlie. Uncle Charlie's I used to go there. And it was cool because on the upper, the next floor up, there was a place because we pioneered in the chopadicophamies. You know, they had the transgender thing. <laughs> yeah. And there's still a bitch that walks around that I saw her. I, I, it's hard for me to call her a her. I saw this guy. Motherfucker got a beard. They must have sawed the tits off and everything. But I know I could recognize her. Tits off, I can recognize her. You know what I mean? It was the same way with sensitivity, man. She was the same one that went in to that clinic. You know, like we saw her because we all back in the day, everybody used to hang a pea chops. Exactly. Well, but but Uncle Charlie was not the pea chop. Yeah, the it was. was on Ellsworth. Huh? The original pea chop was down on Ellsworth, wasn't it? I don't know about no, not Uncle Charlie's. Uncle, they made. No, no, no. I mean, Uncle, Uncle Charlie's was on Ivy and Walnut. Oh, the original pea chop. You mean saying it no, that way? Yeah, that was a shady side yeah. pizza. Yeah, that's that's. I've been talking about folding boxes for half. Yeah, hour. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's down there. But but I mean, even up there, there'd be thirty, forty kids in there, playing pinball, playing pinball in a jukebox, and getting yeah, one I, getting one I, slice I, at I, a time. Go, I, what are you playing the pinball for? That money just goes to the mafia. Go and it did too. Going going outside to the apartment little uh, uh, alcove there and smoking a number, <laughs> drinking a fucking beer. It was fun, man. Numbers. Matter of fact, when I got caught, I ripped off a pen or something from Red Shield. And, like, when I went out. Yeah, stealing a pen from there. Yeah, when I went out, or Pringles or something, I forget. But the pen was one of those ones where you, on the side there's, like, eight buttons. Yeah, yeah, and you like, had to have one because everybody balloons, else had one. Red, yeah, big fat fucking thing. Man. And I go out, and, and, and they're, they're following me, right? Or, or I seen them, like, coming on me, and I broke out in a run as soon as I hit the street, right? And I took a left real quick and went down the alley, and this motherfucker's still following me. I'm like, all right, I put the afterburners on, went around the corner, and <laughs> ducked down in the apartments and got under a garbage can, right? You know, <laughs> so I got away. I thought I got away, but, I mean, I live in the neighborhood. You know, I tell my kids now, there's three rules. There's an episode of Cops. There's three, there's three rules in life. The first, and I told my kids they can recite it to you right now. The first rule is life is not fair. The second rule is nothing in life is free. And the third rule, which I violated that day, was do not piss in your mess kit. In other words, I'm a neighborhood kid. You know, you don't go in the store when you're a neighborhood kid and you have been in the store 50 million times prior to this and steal some and run away and think you're not going to get caught. So I thought I was good, right? That's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, maybe 3. Well, about 8 o'clock that night, I'm sitting in Uncle Charlie's and here this motherfucker comes, right? <laughs> he knew where I hung out. You know, yep. and he's like, you're never allowed in a store again. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, damn. You know, but that's the way it is, you know. I remember I got caught stealing something, man, and dude busted me, and I was fucking scared. And this freaking little dirtbag fucker knocked me out, Lamont Jefferson. Yeah. Get that little piece of shit, man. <laughs> he's a little thief, too. I'll tell you <laughs> something else. These guys got a good shit out of me, man. These guys got all these music systems and everything. I remember listening to music, top top 20 or top 10, whatever you call it, on an AM radio. Remember when it was just AM? There wasn't any FM. I listened to the new sound of 13Q. Yeah, but, and that's because the old sound was 14KQV. You know, and you'd listen to it on these little, these little transistor radios. I remember I got one that, that looked, it made it look like a Sunoco gas pump. That was the best, the best possession a guy could ever have. Had a little earphone. Well, you got to rock the uh, uh, the converter in the car too, you know. I did. The uh, FM in the converter. Merc. In the Merc, I had the FM converter. Yeah, it hooked into FM the converter, tape deck. Or no, how'd that work? 
it, it, it connected to the antenna. I don't yeah. Know, fuck you, man. But it, you connected in with the antenna, the AM radio. Yeah. And you put a button on there, and you're on. You oh, I know what it was. I had the I had the eight track converter that you stuck this thing in the eight track so you could play cassettes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> these kids are like, oh, what the fuck's he talking about? I mean, no, what, dude, I'm serious. What's you're a listening. cassette? I mean, the A track. I mean, you're fucking jamming. Keep on a rocking me. Oh, yeah. Back. Or you'd hear three or four songs at the same time. Hell, yeah, man. And you'd be out there trying to, when it would get fucked up, you'd try to, like, get the tape out, and it would spin back up. Oh, Lord, you kids don't know. You used to have this fucking lakeside tape, man. I'd love that. Uh, the Fantastic and Voyage. Vo man, hell, yeah, man. Yes, sir. I, mean, I remember one time we went out partying, man. I, I think I was, I was 13 or 14, and we went out. Obviously, using illicit substances, and you got fucked up, man. And you're like, Me? Yeah, you're like, Still, you got to drive home. <laughs> like, dude, I don't know how to drive, man. I did that to Ames, so, too. He was like 12. You move this fucker till it says D. <laughs> that makes you stop. That makes you go. And there's lines on either side of the road just stand between them. <laughs> <laughs> did you do good? I, we're both we're here. We're both here. Hell yeah. That's the way it was. Hey, we used to, back in those days, these kids don't understand. I mean, you get a your life gets ruined. You get a DUI now. Oh, uh, no, to, dude. I mean, this was seven thousand pounds of steel. We used to go and we used to buy beer and and, and the, the 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 activity of the evening was, was driving around. Drink. <laughs> yeah, we drive down by the jail downtown and turn the brother music all the way up just so we could see the brothers all dance outside. <laughs> I remember one time, man. We uh, somebody was eighteen. And you had to be 21 to buy beer. Imagine so that. So we get this fucking brilliant idea. We're going to go to West Virginia and get some beer, man. I remember that. I was there. They were selling three. I think it was in the Gremlin. No, I was 18. I and went in there. So we, we drive down there, buy two cases of Rolling Rock. It's 3-2 beer. By now, we're seasoned fucking alcoholics. Yeah. <laughs> we're not even halfway home. Beer's gone. We're like, well, that was a fucking waste. Yeah. I went into that joint. Now, and this is interesting, ladies and gentlemen, because Larry lives right there. And he knows the bar. Oh, that you went to? Yeah, I went in there, and there was a 357 Magnum on the bar because they knew. People from Pittsburgh, this is where they went. It was the first bar off of 22 in West Virginia. So there was hundreds of thousands of us before us. You know what I mean? This freaking pistol was on the bar, and it was a revolver, so you could see the hollow points in the, in the cylinder. You know what I mean? It was pointing at you. Sweet. That was nice, man. Uh, you remember the you remember the abandoned? We're running out of time here, but you remember the abandoned toy store that was next to the tracks? I don't know if you were with me that time or not. It, 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 oh, yeah, that one. <laughs> all right, I ain't even going to go there then. But that was that was I a remember, trip. I remember when everybody we knew all had the same fucking tennis shoes because a train slowed. Oh down. yeah, that was funny, man. Yeah, there was a box car full of trains that that made the brutal mistake of freaking stalling <laughs> out near Pierce Street. Pier Street, man. You know, next thing you know, the little brothers were all in that freaking box car. And every there was, kid in the neighborhood had the same fucking shoes on. The it was, like, it was supply and demand. Five dollars, you could get these shoes. And they were it, all the same. Half size bigger? They were all the same color. And and they had all the sizes. That was amazing. <laughs> Can I get your half size bigger, man? Oh, yeah. You'd be in the school. Walk around, walk around a little bit. See, they fit you right. You'd be in the school. Teachers would be wearing these motherfuckers. The freaking <laughs> cops are wearing them. <laughs> there was like 100,000 pairs of shoes. <laughs> I almost <laughs> forgot about that. That was a good one. This reboard had a pair. May she rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, did she die? Yeah, <laughs> yeah she did. You're the one told me. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah, I do remember that. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for letting us into your life for an hour. We appreciate that. Please contact the show, burgerseyeview at gmail.com. Uh, you can uh, use the hashtag at or the, you know, the hashtag, num hashtag thing, the number symbol. Yeah, say it's called an Octothorpe. The, use the Octothorpe. I just happen to know that. B-E-V, that's because you know shit like that. B-E-V-P-G-H. <laughs> and Eric, or I mean, Funky Dung tweeted something. I don't remember what the fuck it was because they go off after 30 days, and I can't find it. And he sent me some uh, website that I could find it, and I couldn't find the website. So, Funky Dung, thanks for commenting, but I blew it on that one. Uh, like I said before, B-E-V Gold's the way to go. Stowe from the Pucker Time Show, why don't you... Uh, Tell the nation where they can find you, even though you haven't had a show out. Yeah, uh, had a show a long time. Go to puckertime.com. Uh, check us out. Uh, you know, I, I think we're going to have to do this a little more often, man. I think so, too. Man. I had a good time tonight. The time went by way before the material did. We didn't get at any of the news stories. And uh, we got most of the stuff I wanted. 
me what it was like in the 80s again. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we could we could go on like this for hours, no question about yeah, it. We actually could. We actually could. Huh? Uh, so, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thanks. We appreciate it. We're glad you're uh, still listening to the show because I am a podcast luminary. We'll see you podcast. next time, Stove. Be safe, guys.